Hey guys, Grisel here, and I have decided to do makeup inventory. I mentioned this in my um, no buy plan for 2022 video. I think I need to go through and inventory what I have so that I am hyper aware of what is there in the collection and to remind myself and keep myself accountable when it comes to not buying makeup at least throughout the next six months, that's my plan. Um, I'm going to reevaluate my goals every quarter, but makeup is one area that I definitely don't need anything. Skincare is another one. I have enough skincare and hair and toiletry backups to keep me going for basically the whole year, maybe longer. Um, not because I planned it that way or, you know, hoarded in preparation for the no buy. I wasn't even really, um, consciously aware that I would be doing this this year. It was just something that kind of came about because I realized that there was just too much stuff in my life again. I had purchased a lot of things in November and December, partly because I was going through a bit of a depressive episode and I have now realized that when I am depressed, I seem to gravitate towards makeup and cake. But that's a whole other story. So we're gonna sit here at my vanity slash dresser or whatever you call this thing and go through my stuff. It's kind of a mess in this area. It's kind of a mess over there. Like ignore the sides. We're just gonna focus on the middle. Um, I thought of doing this as an above, you know, like overhead type of video, but I don't have the energy for that. We're gonna keep this simple and lazy. Um, so I'm just going to go through everything. And when I edit this video, I will write down a list of all the stuff I have. So I don't know how long this will be, so you might wanna like settle in, grab a drink, because I expect it will probably be long. Um, but we'll start with the stuff that's here and move into the little drawers. So I brought out these guys because I keep these in the drawers. So we'll start with this stuff. Um, this is, I've been putting these into bags just because I need to organize everything. I used to have a very small capsule type collection. Now it's kind of exploded. So these are base products. I have the Glossier Skin Tint. I actually do like using this. It's quite nice. I don't have a lot of like, sorry. I don't have a lot of like acne or um, skin discoloration and stuff, but this is just nice to even up my skin tone. So it is good enough and sheer enough to just kind of give me a wash of color. So. This is staying, it's about, you can't really see it, but it's, it's about a, an eighth of the way used. It will last me a long time. I also have the Essence Pretty Natural Hydrating Foundation in the shade Neutral Ivory, it's number 30. I am a little bit yellow to olivey toned and I have a hard time finding base shades that match my skin tone. They're always either a little too yellow or a little too orange or a little bit too flat and white. So I have a hard time. This one is decent. So I, I do like this. I don't wear bases a lot, especially now that I'm wearing a mask, um, particularly as I wear a KN95 now at work. I find that that gives me the most ma mask -ny. and um, wearing anything super creamy and like this area is not a good idea for me. So I haven't really been reaching for this lately but it was really nice when I was like, you know, on holiday taking pictures and stuff. And by on holiday, I mean in my house, just going around town at best. Um, I recently acquired the Wet n Wild hydrator, t Tinted Hydrator. Uh, words are not with me today, so apologies for, um, you know, things where I trip over my words. I do think a migraine is coming on. Um, so this I recently acquired also, and by recently I mean like within the last month. I originally picked it up for my boyfriend because he's been having a little bit of a skin issue and he wanted to cover it up and I wasn't sure if he would want to like just do something like this or a concealer. He actually decided to go for the concealer so now I am the proud owner of this stuff. It's nice, um, it looks nice, but it like settles into my pores so this may end up being a declutter. But for now, it is a let's try it a little longer. Maybe I could figure out a moisturizer or something that goes better underneath. So I have three like solid foundation-y type base bases. Now, as far as other bases go, or at least like 
base products, I have the Glossier Stretch Concealer. I used to use the original formula in shade 22. They've since kind of reformulated a little bit because it feels different and they expanded their shade range. I got G11, which seemed to be the equivalent of the former 22, like a light with yellowy tones. It's kind of like just my skin tone if it's not the summer. So it's a little bit white for me in the summertime, uh, but it is nice. It's nice for brightening. So I use it to like highlight the center of my face, the center points of my face. And I haven't been reaching for it too much lately because the center points of my face are covered lately. And I also have been reaching primarily for these guys. So these are the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealers in light sand and light ivory. I am kind of in between these two. I used to use the Kosas concealer and uh, that started to smell weird and I went on a random search on Reddit to see like when are these supposed to expire and like what is other people's experiences. One girl described it as smelling like blue cheese and she was correct. It does smell like blue cheese. So investing $28 in a concealer that will only last six months before it starts to smell funky. I love Kosas as a brand. I really like their lipsticks. Such as you'll see, I have some, but um, I don't feel like spending 28 bucks on a concealer that I'm never gonna get through. So these are just as fine. They give me the same kind of like hydrating type coverage. So I use these for under eye circles and also I'd like to highlight parts of my face. So that's all base stuff. So I've got three like traditional foundation-y type bases and three concealers is what we have. Um, I guess I'll put these over here for now just to keep them out of the way. I have a small collection of palettes. Um, the old classic modern renaissance. I actually purchased this second hand. I have dipped in quite a few of the colors. I actually do love these shades so it's a it is a favorite of mine. I or, I did get this off Poshmark, so I did not pay full price. I don't think I would buy used makeup anymore in terms of like the world situation right now, but it was nice while I could. Um, so that is a keeper. So one major like orangey reddish shade palette. Those are colors I gravitate towards. I have the Tartlet Tease palette. This is the oldest palette in my collection. I am considering decluttering it I don't know. I like the shade Wink. That particular shade is one of my favorites. Um, I don't know if I should depot it, keep it. I also like to use these two as eyeliner. So I don't know. I might keep this a little bit longer, see if I go through it. I am doing makeup capsules every week. Um, I'm also considering doing like a rolling pan type of situation where I do like, you know, um, I saw someone do like a use 10 products over 10 days type of a thing and then change out the 10 products. So I might do something like that. This is a maybe in the future declutter, but for now I am keeping it. It is not going to go into a purgatory box because I feel like I might use it, but we'll see. I feel like I acquired a lot of eyeshadow in the last year and a half, mostly because again, like this part of my face doesn't show, so I have been enhancing this part of my face. Um, the Revolution Ultimate Nudes, it is one of my favorites too. I wanted like the 3CE, one of the 3CE palettes, it's like a pinky color. And then I saw this one and it looked pretty much like a dupe for it, so I thought let me try this and see if I like these colors on me. So it's, this is the medium one, um, sometimes I think maybe the light would have been a better match for me, but I do like these. They are sometimes a little bit extra dramatic, um, especially the old, the uh, darker colors, but I do reach for this a lot, so that is Keeper. I stopped buying e.l.f. Uh, eye products in particular a while ago, and I was kind of lured back in by this shade of blue. This is the Bite Size Eyeshadow and Carnival Candy. The thing is, this blue is incredibly patchy. It's hard to work with, it goes on, like, I can't get it on a brush. There's, there's no using a brush to put it on. It goes on best with fingers, kind of like uh, the ColourPop ones or something. But once I put it on my eye, it looks very patchy. It'll be, like, very sheer in some areas. It'll build up in other areas. It's really, really hard to work with. Tons of fallout. And I ended up liking these other three shades a lot more. 
The thing is also that when I wear this, even though it looks terrible in my opinion, it really draws the eye so people are like fascinated by it. But this may go into my purgatory. I actually uh, put on the blue yesterday. It was nothing else. Like I just put on blue eyeshadow to walk around my house. And um, the same thing happened. Like my boyfriend came over, saw me and was like, oh wow, you're wearing makeup. Because it looks very dramatic, but then you look closely and it's like, oh, it's all weird in places. And it's got like creasing and... I think we're putting this in a purgatory because while I do like these other three shades, I feel like the one thing going for them is that they're mattes, but they're fairly similar in like the family of colors that are, I already have available in this one and in the uh, Modern Renaissance. I feel like, I feel like Modern Renaissance slightly brighter, like the red ochre and that reddish tone are pretty similar. This guy is like a little bit darker than these two, but it's the same sort of like color family. I don't know. I don't, I just don't know, but I, I really weirdly like these two colors the most. I'm not a depotter. I don't like to like potentially crack the stuff, so I'm not seeing myself depotting these, but we will consider you again in the future. I have the ColourPop flower. I did actually really just want this for the little flower skunk. But also the colors are beautiful. I was duly impressed. Um, I used to be a big purple wearer and not so much anymore. Cover that but there's a little, a little skunk right there. Uh, but these are just gorgeous colors when you put them on so I'm really pleased with these. I need to find more reasons to wear them. I also have the ColourPop Sailor Moon palette again. Is it for the cover? Yes, this is exactly why I got it. But I also weirdly love this crazy combination of colors. It's so wild. Um, I do love the yellow. I love wearing weird, bright colors. I feel like these purpley shades up in here. Oh, I'm doing like the backwards thing. Here we go. These guys are just really nice when I wear them. And then this top row is really nice as basic neutrals. Um, they're just really pretty. And yeah, these two are like the craziest colors in this palette, but I actually love finding ways to use them. So keeper. And this is my most uh, used like neutral palette. It's the Urban Decay Ultimate Basics. Crazy big uh, mirror right there. It's just really basic and as I look at this, and I look at this guy, again, they're just slightly off. Just slight, slightly different. Like this, this one just has a hint more, I would say, red and a little bit more yellow in that brown color. So, uh, I don't know. Still in purgatory, because I feel like the formula is just not quite there. So these are my palettes. Um, that one is a definite. This one too, these guys. <sighs> Maybe I will just put this in purgatory along with the elf. I will see. If I use them in the next, if I reach for it in the next three months, I'll keep it. If not, I might end up decluttering those. Because I just feel like those colors are just close enough to the other ones I have that it won't be a big deal. Um, this one, I feel like will turn eventually. I feel like it smells like it's about to turn, so... I'll keep these guys a little bit longer, and these are fine. They go in there. I'll put these on the floor for now. It's going to get tricky to take everything out here. Okay, we'll work with what we've got up here now. I have a small container of lip balms because I love lip balms in tins, but they take forever to get used up. So I decided to just put them on this little container. Uh, this is the lip balm that I'm actually using. It's definitely well-loved. It is my favorite lip balm, so I'd say another <laughs> year's worth, I imagine. Uh, but this has a long shelf life, so it's still good. It still smells like roses. Uh, this was a gift that I received, so I haven't tried this balm, but it is uh, here for when I need it. It's a, like a small shop from California that I'm, my aunt gave me a little present box from. I have the Mocha Rose from Also Smith's. I used to have this in my office. 
Yep, still smells like Turkish Delight, basically. That's what it smells like. I am a Turkish Delight person. Yes, I am a fantasy villain type person, apparently. Um, if you know, you know. It smells delicious. <laughs> it smells just like Turkish Delight. Um, this one I will use once this other one is done. I, I used to have this in my office, and before we uh, shut down for 2020, I brought it home, and I just kept it here. So I am now back in the office, but I don't take it back. Um, and then lastly, I got this for my birthday. I really, again, just wanted it for the tin. I do love a pretty tin. This smells very nice. It's a Spanish company. It's called the Gal Collection, but what is the brand? I think it's like an Antonio Puig. I don't know. It smells like oranges. Barely touched so far, but um, it's quite nice. It's the Gal Collection, is all that I see, but they have these like Art Deco-y, very Art Nouveau-ish, Art Deco-y type of covers. This one's more Art Nouveau, I would say, um, but some of them look a little bit more like 1920s-ish and stuff like that. They're lovely. It smells pretty. We'll use it. Let's tackle now the other stuff. Okay, so this up here is actually what I am currently um, capsuling. So I have the Hourglass, this is Mood Exposure. It's a little blush. I like these mini blushes because I feel like I can get through a mini blush much easier than a large blush. Yes, I realize they're more expensive, but in terms of sustainability and what I will use, I prefer to just go for a travel size. I have had this for several years now. One of the reasons I don't reach for it as often is because even just a soft wash of this makes me look incredibly made up and dramatic. So, I've been trying to reach for it again just to force myself to use it. And this week I've been using it. It's also winter, so I could go for those darker, deeper pinks on my cheeks. Um, I also have this CoverGirl Clean Fresh. This was a totally a YouTube maybe buy it, so I'm trying to get through it. I have the color Fair. It's very pale. I am a very pale person. But I mostly just use this for a setting powder. I have this very old Becca highlighter. It is the only highlighter I have. I don't use highlighter much. I do like how it looks, but I prefer a I prefer a cream highlighter, um, but all the creams that I had just, you know, reached their expiration dates and they were very like Garmas and all these other brands. They will get kind of funky. They're natural products. They don't have preservatives. You got to toss them eventually. So I tossed all my cream highlighters and all I have is this one in vanilla quartz. It's a very tiny baby dip in there. My goal is to hit pan on this, I hope. So I'm going to be forcing myself to use it. I know that Becca is potentially out of business slash being saved by some other company. Um, I don't know the full logistics of it. I see that there's a little hole in the back, so I could depot this and just put it in a Z palette that I have, but I'll keep it here for now. I would like to make some progress on this, so I have to just kind of force myself to use it. I have these two, again, baby bronzers. I like how the physician's formula looks this will be controversial i hate how it smells i think it's most disgusting i do not want to smell like sunscreen i prefer my sunscreen not to smell like sunscreen so i hate how this product smells even though it looks nice um so if you have a bronzer recommendation that is light not too orange not too dark and um has no scent in it or at least no like coconut sunscreeny scent please recommend uh, I also recently purchased the matte version of this that they produce, which is the matte Monoi, I think it's Monoi. I hate this even more. This smells even stronger. So I currently took them out of my makeup container because they smell so strong that everything else was smelling of them. But I only recently purchased this, so I don't really want to toss it right away. Um, it's, a t it's a toss up for me because while this has a scent that I don't love, at least it dissipates faster, but this just lingers for a while, and it has an undercurrent of that coconutty smell, but also like maybe rose and banana. I don't know. It makes me nauseous. I am sensitive to scents, and it does not please me. So they're kind of like in scent quarantine right now. Sorry, I think I broke a nail. Uh, I have this stuff we'll do later. Part of the capsule, I'll keep this for later, um, 
currently using a color pop. I'll keep these for when we get into the little drawer. So let's do this little top tray. I should dust it up. I should dust while I'm at it. I will. Okay, I have one of these in my bag, so I will. It's the one that looks like black honey. I think it's ecstatic. So these are the e.l.f. hydrating cores. We've reached the um, the stuff I purchased while I was depressed. So I purchased this first one in Delightful. It's very grazy. I actually kind of like that look. So I really liked how it looked and how it felt. So then I wanted to try some more and I got Lovely, which is the reddish tone. And, and then I wanted another one and I got Ecstatic, which is the one that like has become like TikTok famous for looking like Clinique's Black Honey, which is like fascinating to me because I was around when Black Honey came out and was first popular. So it's interesting to see that resurgence. So I have those. Did I need them? No. Do I have them? Yes. And uh, I do love them. So there's that. I also recently purchased this All May Lip Vibes in Love Yourself. I saw someone basically using this on, it was a major product placement thing in a movie and I was like, ooh, that color's nice, so I bought it. So far, I've only used it once because it's the most recent, no, actually this is the second most recent acquisition I've had, but um, it is a beautiful lip color and it feels really nice, but right now I'm not going for like the deep reds because I'm wearing a mask, so uh, the potential of this spreading all over my face is high, but I will use it again when I can, maybe in videos and stuff. <sighs> More of my depression purchases, the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. I actually really do like this. I feel like it's a very neutral color. You will notice um, if you had ever seen any of my earlier videos way back when, I used to be very much into only like natural or natural clean beauty type stuff and um, primarily cruelty free stuff. I am a bad, bad person and I, I am not particularly caring whether or not they are either of those categories anymore. So um, that it is what it is. People change, values change, interests change. I have my reasons and I'm not going to get into it. But I do enjoy this product. I am leaning more towards glosses lately because I feel like they're so much easier to apply the minute I have to take off a, off a mask to do an, a meeting or something. Colourpop Luxe Velvet. Love it. This is Get Money. Um, I dabbed this on and spread it. It's, again, these, like, glossy slash, you know, like, matte creams have been my favorite slightly. <coughs> I have the YSL, um, I think these are called, like, Rouge Velours or something like that. What the heck are these called? Rouge Velout. Velout. Something like that. Anyhow. I don't know the color because they don't put that on the tube, but it's like a coppery brownish color. That actually is very nostalgic for me because it reminds me of like one of my first lipsticks that I had when I was in like sixth grade and started wearing lipstick. I do like that. It's a beautiful formula. I purchased it as like a treat yourself for my birthday. And I was like, surely I'm, you know, whatever. It's luxury lipstick, whatever. It's just for fun. And I was like, God, I love this formula. Why did I have to love it? But I do. I actually like it way more than this one. This is the Dior Lip Glow, which I also had, this was I think actually the last lipstick I purchased before the disaster that was 2020. Um, I did manage to keep using this, so I, I uh, that's as far as it goes. So I feel like I have made some progress on this one. I have managed to use it a lot. Look, it goes in pretty deep. Simply because it is such a balmy color, I can just slap this on as a lip balm call it a day so I have continued to use that even when I wasn't wearing much makeup. This is actually the most recent thing I have purchased. It's the Peri Pera Ink Velvet. I've always wanted to use these. I saw someone use this particular color. It's Love Sniper Red and it is beautiful. It is everything that I wanted in a like satin finish matte um, lip cream. It works really well under my mask. It literally does not budge. Um, I wore it the other day and I put it on at like 8 a.m. by 6 p.m. It was still like there was that like sheer wash of a stain. So even once the color comes off, your lips are basically stained. You have to remove it with uh, some makeup remover. So it was really nice and I'm glad I purchased it. So that's a good red for me. 
these are eye things I have. I had actually tried to declutter this a little while back, but it kind of ended up in my purgatory and came back into the collection. It's the Benacaz uh, Natural Kajal Eyeliner. I like a pencil. I feel like pencils work for me, so I like that one. Um, this I should probably toss because it is getting now clumpy and it's it's reached that like lifespan. It's probably a little bit older than the lifespan, but it's the Essence Bye Bye Panda. I feel like everybody talks about the Lash Princess, but this is really good because it's not um, the kind of mascara. It is smudge proof, volumizing and defining, and it's not the kind of mascara that like by the end of the day I will have raccoon eyes. So that's exactly why I purchased it, and it keeps its promise. This I may toss. It's the Essence Make Me Brow. Um, this color is just a little bit too light for me. It's weird. I don't particularly care for it. I prefer a clear brow gel, so this might be a I'd get rid of, so I'll put it over here for now. And now we've reached the drawers. No, we haven't. We have these guys. We have that. We have almost reached the drawers. Um, Trader Joe's lip balm butter. Lip, yeah, that's what it's called, lip balm butter. It's really rich on lips, so this goes into the uh, lip balm area. This is a couple of years old, but it's still going strong. It's the Dear Darling Water Tint. I do sometimes just put this on with a little bit of balm and call it a day. I totally just bought this for the cap. It's the Revolution um, Friends collab. This was the Rachel. It's just clear. I have thoughts about why these colors don't match the characters that they picked, but it's so cute and it says Central Park on it. And yeah, so there you go. And then this one is um, the Creme, the Tata, BT21, like lip cheek thing. Um, it's really nice. It's actually a really nice red. I totally bought this on a whim, impulse purchase, but I really like it. I just need more uses for it now. So let's head into drawer one. These are single shadowy things. Let's grab these guys that I put aside earlier. I have two e.l.f. putty primers. I know that people don't always like these. I have found really good use for them. I have oily eyelids and these kind of dry that out. I've got the um, cream color, which is like, an or like a yellowy cream. Very basic base for me. And then I have the rose color. I would not call this rose, but um, so it's like a grayish pink color. I think they work for me. I use my finger to apply them. I actually don't like the e.l.f. putty primer for the face, but I really liked these for the eyes. This is a YouTube Made Me Do It purchase. Actually, several of these are YouTube Made Me Do It. So basically, I've been watching Amanda Z. I do like a wet eye look, and she recommended these guys. Um, she actually recommended Italian Ice from the Ulta Bouncy Eyeshadow Collection, and they had a buy two get one free and I normally don't go for those but I was stuck between buttercream and Italian ice this is buttercream so I was stuck between these two and I, I decided to also get honeycomb because it was free and I was weak at that moment so I do actually like all three of them they're lovely to work with Two more Amanda Z's made me do it. The Revlon Color Stay in Praline. I wanted a one and done shadow. And as I said, I'm wearing a lot more shadows. And this is perfect for just like throwing it on. So one like solid cream shadow. And then this is ColourPop Ritz. Also completely beautiful formula. This one is nice and fresh, like it definitely had not dried out yet. I feel that sometimes buying ColourPop at Ulta, they come out a little bit dry. That one's really good. These are two very old ColourPops. This is the Super Shock in Twitter Painted, and this one is uh, Set to Stun. And I suspect that they have dried out, but I suspect they were always a little dry. I feel like I'm not getting a lot of the color. I did see a way to revive them. I watched a few videos. I'm tempted to do it. Um, 
I might pick one and try it and see if it works. And if it does, you know, that if it doesn't, that will be the sacrifice. And if it does, then we'll do it to the other one. Here we have more stuff. I've got a uh, purple NYX gel liner. I was in the mood for purple. I have the L'Oreal uh, telescopic liquid liner in carbon black. Because um, I wanted a liquid liner, I still haven't found like that perfect gel or liquid liner for me. I prefer a gel. Still haven't found one that's quite right for me, but those are decent. These are also Amanda Z made me buy it. It's the NYX Jumbo in, one is yogurt. Yes, yogurt and iced mocha. Yogurt is the pinkier one. Iced mocha is more brown. I really like them both. And this is the e.l.f. No Budge in copper. I think it's copper is the color. No, it is. Oh, yeah. Yes, copper chic. For a minute I thought it said coffee chic. But yes, this one is lovely. One and done. Rub it on, smudge it around, and you're good to go type of liner. These two I had received. These are the Mineral Fusion uh, mascaras. I had received these in like beauty boxes a while back. Um, I think I'm going to be going into one of these now when I replace the Bye Bye Panda. And a retractable pencil for my eyebrows from Wet n Wild. I don't do my brows too often, but sometimes I want to make them a little bit more full. I mean, it's not like they aren't full enough already. And this is the Pacifica Natural Minerals in their brownie shade. A fringe is what it's called. I may have to get rid of this. I suspect that it's one of the things that gives my eyes allergies. I got rid of a lot of eyeshadows and eyeliners and eye products in the past and I like brushes, like makeup brushes, because I suspected that something was giving me an allergy. I have since figured out that one of the things that was giving me the allergy was actually the sunscreen I was wearing. This might also be a culprit, but I'll set it aside for now. Two. We're getting closer to the finish line. I have two Ritual de Fee um, pigment balms. I have Glass Wing, which is this very dark color. I've used this on lips and cheeks, but particularly lips because I love how it kind of stains the lips. And this is Ladybug, which was originally like a specialty limited edition shade. I think it's now part of the range. I do love both of these. I love the color they give. Um, you barely need to use any and you get this like sheer wash of color on the lips or the cheeks. So those are two favorites. I recently acquired also a Amanda Z made me do it. I really need, I need to stop watching her because I bought a lot of stuff under her recommendation. This is the Milani Cheek Kiss in Merlot Moment. I like these kinds of colors for my cheeks. Um, I was trying to get something similar to what I used to have when I owned RMS Diabolique, that did totally go bad. Uh, this is a little bit lighter. Diabolique has more of a deep purple, but I like it. Still learning how to work with it, though if I go overboard it gets very dramatic and I end up looking like a flapper. This is um, another powder product. I was looking for something one and done. This is a BB packed, but it is a powder packed. So. This is by Skin79. You open it up and it's very yellowy. So it works for me, but particularly in the summer. It's more of like my tanned face. Now we go on to blushes, traditional powder blushes. I've got the Heme, I don't know if it's Heme or Heme or Heme. Um, this is the Dewy Cheek color in Golden Peach. Also good for me in the summer. I bought these for my birthday. I actually featured them when I got them. I did an unboxing in one of my vlogs. And this one is the Pure Cheek Color in Nude Beige. Um, this has, kind of reminds me of a NARS color. It's got a little bit of a glittery golden hint. This one I can sort of manage in winter, but definitely the other one is definitely a summer color. I have the Romandy or Romand, I don't know how to pronounce it, the Better Than Cheek. I'm pretty sure this is is it fig chip? I think it's fig chip, but I could be wrong. Um, there's like four colors. It's whichever one is the more orangey shade. 
I'm trying not to get that shadow of my finger. There it is. There you go. And yeah. This is a nice everyday color for me. And lastly, another color pop. This is the Floating Lights from their Disney Designer Collection. Again, purchased solely for the cover because I love Tangled. But this has become one of my favorite peach, like, not peach, pinky, like, natural colors. It looks like strawberry milk, but it looks lovely on my cheeks. So, honestly, this is what I wear the most, followed by this one lately. And then one of these guys. The, the, that's fine, because the other colors are better for different seasons. And right now it's winter, so these are my winter shades. And we're down to the last one. Uh -huh, the lipsticks. Here we have some things to reckon with. I already know that I'm going to be getting rid of this Return to Feed. It smells like it's gone off. It's also very dry. I might put it in Purgatory, but I might just get rid of it. It's their Fortune Teller shade. Very dark color, very purple. But honestly, I oh, sorry, I shouldn't have done that. When I bought Glasswing, the color payoff is essentially the same. So I feel like if I have Glasswing, which has a nicer formula, more not buttery or dewy, but just feels more comfortable on the lips. This one is drier, always was drier, but now feels really dry. Like you gotta work it into your lips dry. So this might actually just be a better. We'll put it over here with the other ones. This one hurts me. It hurts me. This is the Violette Far Petal Bouche. I cannot get this thing to work. I was so happy when I got this. Um, I feel like if you look at this, this is an indication of what it's like to work with this. It's mirrors everywhere. I've had to wipe this bottle so many times. You can see along the white cap. Does that one of there you go. You can see like there's like red along the bottom of the white cap. I hope that was in focus. If it wasn't, sorry. Um, it smears everywhere. I put this on and every time I drink something or eat something, I worry that it's all over my mouth um, and onto my face. I've tried this as a dab on and, you know, like rub it on. I've tried this with a brush. I have tried using it straight with the applicator. I have done only like the bottom lip. I have done only like the center gradient. Nothing makes it stay on my lips. It always just wants to slide right off and I can't wear this other than decoratively for a picture without it going all over the place. So while it hurts me, this was a $28 purchase if I recall correctly, and it's a beautiful color. I just can't work with this formula. It is impossible to work with. This, no smearing. This goes all over your mouth. Um, I just can't make it work, I don't know. I actually looked up some videos to see how other people make it work, and I have found a couple of people who say the same thing, like it just doesn't work for their lips. It just doesn't stay on it, it just goes everywhere, and I didn't want that, so that will definitely be out. I hate that I have to do that, but I do. This one, I keep telling myself that I will try to make it work. I saw this, um, it's a L'Oreal, Colorie Shine and Dazzling Doe. I saw this on a pin and it looks so nice, but like when I wear it on my skin, it makes me look like a zombie. I feel like if I put it on now, you guys could see, um, but I don't want to. I thought of using it as a base for other colors to do gradients, but I rarely, if ever, do a gradient and I think it's just, I'm gonna let it go. This will be a declutter. I'll put you here with these guys. I have the um, Bear It All from Wet n Wild, which in the past I have used as a gradient, also just um, a very like fair nude for me, so I feel like this takes care of what Dazzling Doe was supposed to do for me. 
So we'll be keeping this one. Okay, I have these. Yes, just these two. I used to have a third. Do I have a third? I do have a third. I don't know where it is. Um, so yes, I have three Kikos. Is there a truck passing? This one is one of the ones I recently purchased. It's very like neutral, pinky, hint of blue in it. This is the one that I've had for a while. This one shows very wine on me. I love it, particularly for winter. And the other one I have is in one of my bags. I think my work bag right now. And that one is very um, sheer pinky wash with a touch of brown in it. I like those. Two Romandies or Romans, whatever they're called. One is very orangey red. This is their Better Than Lip collection. Is it? I believe it is. And one is more like pinky traditional red. Both very nice, sheer mattes. Works with anything. Also does not smudge, so I, I've got my reds that don't smudge. My nose is itchy. Ah. I have an itchy nose. All the dust is getting to me. Okay, we're gonna leave them out for later. 3CE, this is a very orangey shade. It's very good for me in the fall. I love orangey shades. They just work with my skin tone for me. It's hit me up is the color. And these are my two Kosas that I have left. Rosewater by Kosas is my favorite pinky nude. I did get through it. It is the one lipstick I have managed to pan in my lifetime. So I made a point of using it up and I did in 2019. And I would love to repurchase it, but I have told myself I will not until I get through the other ones. So I have Undone, which is a pink neutral with a bit of like brown in it. At least that's how it shows on me. So it looks a little bricky on me. And then I have Royal, which is a wine rose wash on me. And now we have the collection of Max. I feel like one might be missing. So I won't go through all of these because I feel like these are so well known, but I will just read out the names. So I've got a Baby Mac in Russian Red. I do like this red. It works for me. I have Patisserie, which is a sheer, glittery, like, neutral baby pink. I think the only baby pink type color I own. I've got Diva, which is one of their matte, deep, wine, purple shades. Good for winter. I've got Mer, Mer, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it, but it's a neutral pink that kind of replaced Rose Water in my collection. So, until that one is used up, I won't be repurchasing Rose Water. Lady Danger, which is an orange red. I mostly wear it in the summer. And then Smoked Almond, which is a very brownie um, pink neutral that I also wear more in the fall. And that is everything. I don't think I missed anything. I'm pretty sure, other than that one Kiko that is in my bag, yes, I definitely have all the all the Macs were in there. So the one Kiko in my bag, I have a couple more glosses. So two more glosses are in my like everyday and work bags. Um, and the one Elf that is in my like everyday going out bag. This is everything I own. So I think you can see that I do not need anything else. This is enough of a collection. So I will rewatch myself going over these and create an inventory list. And I don't know how detailed I'll get with the inventory list. It may be as simple like you have five lipsticks, this many are Max, this many are Kikos or whatever. Or I might like break it down by like shades, especially for the lipsticks. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. My goal is to, particularly for the eyeshadows, to try to hit pan on at least a few of those colors. I would like to hit pan eventually on the powder, at least the, the paler of the two powders that I can use as a setting powder. And I would like to maybe get through, I think Royal as the oldest 
lipstick in my Kosas collection because Kosas is natural and this will eventually go. Um, it's neutral enough that I can wear it regularly, so this is also their old like plastic bullet, so that's my goal to maybe to get through that one lipstick as as much as I can within reason before it gets smelly and work my way through some of the eyeshadows. The rest will be just like don't buy more. You don't need more. I have every shade. I've got the neutrals, I've got the fairs, I've got the darks, I've got the deeps, I've got the bright oranges. I don't need any more lipsticks. Now, do I covet things? Yes, of course I do. I have a whole list of things I covet and I'm trying to maintain a these are the things that I impulsively want to buy list, anti-haul type of collection list. Um, maybe for my birthday I will treat myself to something. Um, I do want to try, for instance, like the Rare Beauty blushes. I think they look beautiful. I've been wanting to try them since they came out, but it's still that whole thing of like, do I need more blush? I mean, it'll take me years to go through a blush. So I kind of remember the days when I was a very basic, like dandelion, everyday sort of a girl. That was like my high school and college years. I am no longer that girl. I'm not a single lipstick kind of girl. I know that I'm not that much of a minimalist, so working with little capsules is the best that I can do, and that's sort of the goal that I have. Just use what I have, use what I can, pan what I can, and toss whatever gets beyond its expiry date and starts to smell weird. So that's the goal. This is my makeup. This is what I have to work with for the next year. Maybe in six months I'll have made some progress and be able to report back if I have an empty or a pan, but for now, that's, that's that. This is it we proceed. So thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me for what is now almost an hour long video. So wow, that's me doing a lot of talking. Um, but this is a project for myself as much as just to share with you guys. I want to aspire to be slightly more minimal again in my lifestyle products at least and to use up what I have to be more sustainable, to appreciate the beauty and the things that I already own. So that's what I'm here for right now. So if you got all the way through this, let me know down below, like comment with a lipstick emoji or something. Um, let me know if you're engaging in any kind of like beauty project, whether it's a project pan or a uh, shop my stash or whatever. I do love to watch these kinds of videos. So if you're recording your progress and doing one of these, let me know, drop your channels down below because I would love to watch it. So for now, I bid you all adieu and I will check in with you all soon, I hope. If you want to see my makeup capsules, I'm going to start reposting them on my style Instagram, which is at Quiet Days Style, and that is where I post my um, used to be daily outfits, it's kind of become weekly outfits now, and just capsule updates. Probably going to start doing them in the reels, but for now, that's the plan. You can hop on over there, I might bring them onto this channel, I don't know, we'll see. Things are very uh, super that's purpose. A very, uh, I can't think of the word right now. I've got no plans is what I'm trying to say, but that is that. So I'll check in with you guys later. I hope you have a great week, great weekend if it's your weekend, great whatever the future looks like for you, and I will see you guys later.